Hopefully that won't happen. Hey, it? everybody. We are trying to set this up and get started for our live Sunday school. This is a first for me, so as long as nobody's on right now, we're good to go. <laughs> How's that look? Yeah. We got three people joining us right now, which is good. We don't know who those three people are. <laughs> Five people. We're not going to start just yet. We're going to start at 10 o'clock, but we need to know if it's all working out. If you guys could give us some feedback, that would be great. Gray Widstrom, what's up, Gray? Right. Caitlin Roth. Glad you're with us. Beth Lane. Glad you're here. How we doing? I can't see anything from that. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's just go here. There we are. There we are. All right. A little delay. <laughs> Can fix what we said wrong. Okay. All right, Deb Edson, I can see you. I can't see everybody, but we're going to try to make this thing work. Uh, you need to know this is our first time doing this. This is my first time doing it. Have y'all done this before? No, never. No, so. no. <laughs> this is Nolan Carly's first time doing this, and uh, we don't really know what we're doing. I saw a meme uh, over the week that uh, goes out on the PCA pastors and uh, ruling elders um, Facebook page, and it was Forrest Gump sitting on a bench, and the meme said, and just like that, we were all televangelists. <laughs> I am not a televangelist, and uh, this is not TBN, this is CMPC Daily, and this is our first time, and we don't really know what we're doing, but we're going to walk through it together, and uh, we're going to make this thing happen, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, let's see, we have about 34 folks joining us. Does he, you have the time? 10.01. 10.01, so we need to get started. Uh, you guys ready to start? Let's do it, yeah. Do it. All right. Let's do it. I need to tell you just a few announcements to start with. Uh, first thing I want to tell you about is the Chestnut Mountain Presbyterian Church daily feed. We do have a daily feed that's coming uh, through Facebook. It's where some of the pastors are doing daily devotions. We're also giving you uh, latest updates on how things are going, uh, how we're dealing with everything here. And uh, that goes out every day. And I want you to know that you can log on to our website and it'll direct you to the feed. But also you can just go straight to our Facebook page and you'll see a daily post. Uh, over the next week, there's probably going to be more than just one post because there's so much going on. And we want to keep people connected. God didn't intend for us to be separated like this. Uh, God made us to be creatures that would connect with one another, to fellowship together, even as Pastor John talked about this morning in the worship service. Uh, so stay connected through the daily feed. I want to let you know also right now you can connect on to the Rooted Instagram college page. Uh, we have uh, that running Instagram Live right now, so if Facebook gets bogged down with all our viewers, which is probably not going to happen, but just in case, there's other uh, options that you can go to Instagram Live and you can see our time here this morning. Uh, so I think those are the announcements that we have. I, I also, well, 
I'll say this a little bit later, but one more thing is that we are going to have some of our missionaries uh, talking to us over the next few weeks, uh, next week or so. Uh, if you're a, an active member in our church, you know today was Mission Conference Sunday. And uh, this is very sobering to us because this morning we would have uh, commissioned Noah and Carly to go to Thailand in our corporate worship service. We didn't get to do that. So this is the second best that we can do. And, and we want to spend some time talking with them, seeing how things are going, uh, and, and really being able to pray for them and hear from them because this is a challenging time for them and Macy as well. So let me do this. Let me start our time with prayer. And uh, I would encourage you, you can give us some feedback. You can uh, send in questions to us. We're going to try to answer the questions. Uh, but let me begin our time with prayer. Our Father, we do thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for the, the amazing technology that we have to be able to uh, do what we're doing even right now. People all over the country and, and probably around the world are connected to us right now. And we just give you thanks for technology. We thank you that our church has missionaries scattered around the world, and we thank you that you're raising up people here that would go to the field. And you've raised up Noah and Carly and Macy, and you want them in Thailand. But according to your plan, Lord, not yet. And so, Father, as we come and, and talk with them this morning, I just pray that you would lead our time. I pray that you would make the technology that we have work for us, and we would know what we're doing, and uh, this time would just be a sweet time that we can hear from them and encourage the body of believers here at Chestnut Mountain. So please be with us through the power of your Holy Spirit, and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so uh, let me just begin by asking uh, Noah and Carly, what, what has the past few years looked like for you? I think um, the, the phrase that we've used a lot is hurry up and wait. Um, it's been kind of a long couple of years that have really mixed into a giant blur for me, but we really started March of 2018 on, on this journey, and it has been good, and we have learned a lot, um, but it's really been a period of, of transition, and living in transition is can be awkward and very sanctifying, and, and at times... Um, kind of lonely and hard even though we have so much support and love we've had to you know when living in Augusta we had to slowly start dialing back what we were involved in and what we could do to kind of enter the almost, almost full-time support raising mode that you just kind of can't continue your regular things when you're traveling so I think in some ways it's it's good and others it can be hard you have like one foot out the door but you know one most of you still back in what do you think, Noah? Uh, yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, about the same. It's uh, been a busy time. Uh, just a lot going on. Uh, about five years ago, we moved to Augusta so I could go to nursing school. Uh, then I uh, finished nursing school, and about maybe two or three weeks later, we had Macy. And then I started my job at the VA. And so it's just, and then we started the MTW process. So it's just been a very busy, busy time over the past couple of years. And now nobody would have imagined the coronavirus would come <laughs> yeah. and delay you uh, from going to Bangkok. Well, let me ask you this. I like to do this with some people in the church. Uh, if you could give us a one-word summary about support raising. You only get one word. What would you say? You said hurry up and wait, but that's a phrase. Like give us phrases. just one word. <laughs> if I'll go first, you can think about your answer. Um, for me, it would be humbling. Um, I do not like asking people for help. And so going to the mission field, you have to have help. You have to have people who pray for you. You have to pe have people who financially support you. Uh, and so this was a very difficult process, a very humbling process for me. Um, about halfway through, I just realized if I did not 
if the Lord did not deal with this pride in me, we wouldn't get to the mission field. You have to ask people to support you. And, and so uh, the Lord just works in my heart. Uh, he's helped me to, to deal with my pride and uh, humbled me throughout this process. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, just as Pastor John was preaching this morning, I think the Lord is humbling us all even now. Uh, and I would just encourage you to some of the people who are watching, uh, it's not easy to ask for help. Everybody knows that. But right now, uh, we know people need help, but we don't always know the people that need the help. So reach out to the church and let us know if you need help, whatever that looks like, whether it's groceries or medicine, if, if you need somebody to go to the store for you, if you need toilet paper, we will find you toilet paper. I don't know where, but we'll find that. Uh, but seriously, if you need help, let us know. Uh, so your word's humbling. What about your word, Carly? Okay, my word will be peace. And since you expounded on it, I can, <laughs> yeah. I can make it work. Um, but something, I don't know if it's directly related to just support raising, but the time as a whole and the transition is that peace is not a place you arrive at, but a person that you abide in. And I think that there's many times, like, you know, I felt frustrated being in this strange phase of life. But, you know, unless you're abiding in Christ, you know, none of it makes sense and you can't do it alone. So while things are chaos, you know, you, you abide in Christ and that's where you find your peace. Yeah, yeah. So give us uh, a little bit of a timeline as to what happens now. I know that you guys spoke with Tim Mills yeah. uh, just a couple nights ago, was it? Uh, Tim Mills, Tim and Rihanna, uh, we support them as a church there in Bangkok. They, they are the team leaders for the Bangkok team. And uh, Noah and Carly were able to speak with them. You guys also know that we support Trey and Kiki Adams. Maybe they're joining us here this morning. I don't know, hopefully. Uh, but we need to know as a church how we can pray for you in the sense of what's the timeline. Uh, you're not going this week. No. Okay. <laughs> So we know they're not going this week, but tell us what happens from here forward. Yeah, um, I think we as a team just continue to monitor the situation in Thailand. I read on another missionary's Facebook page uh, yesterday that the government in Thailand has shut down pretty much all unessential businesses in Thailand for 22 days. And so that oh, wow. would put... Um, that date at April 14th and so it's just a very difficult situation in Thailand as it's you know difficult for many of us here and so we're talking with our team trying to decide when will be the best time for us to arrive for them to have time to take care of us it takes a lot of their their time to uh, bring us into a country where basically like newborns and we can't speak the language yet we don't know we're too much stuff is at, um, and so we'll need a lot of their time to help us acclimate. Um, so we're just trying to decide with them what's the best time. So we don't have, you know, a definite date right now. So uh, 22 days. That's April the 14th. Yeah. Um, then, in terms of uh, your time here, you know, how can we help you? Are there things that we can do? We're praying for them, obviously, but uh, is there anything else we can do while while you're here waiting? How is Macy doing while you're waiting? <laughs> uh, Macy is Macy. <laughs> uh, she, she's wide open. Yeah, she's wide open. I mean, she's into everything. As long as she has something to explore, she, okay. she's doing good. So the grandparents and aunt are helping us with that. They're working very hard. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Sweet helpers, but I think it is affecting her more. I think just the last couple of days she has calmed down some, and I think that's just what to expect with any little one. Like we moved out of the place we were staying, and so lots of physical changes were happening to her. She would get more upset even if we would leave, you know, maybe no, just to run an errand, or you know, she kind of like, is he coming back right away? Not that we've left, you know, her any place for a long time, but I think she's being, you know, was feeling a little kind of nervous and that came out with mm -hmm. behavior things but I think we're we've settled in nicely into a new temporary routine I think she's doing a little bit better are there things we can do as far as her or as far as 
where you're staying. Is there anything else we can do other than pray? We, we will be praying, but I, I mean, I know that might be a difficult question to answer, but is there anything that you know of? Yeah, no. We don't have enough toilet paper and hand sanitizer, so. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, well, tell us, Noah, you've kind of been on this trajectory for a while. Uh, you had, you know, God called you to the mission field, and then you thought Thailand's where it's going to be. Over the time that you guys have been planning, and then you met Carly, over the time that you guys have been planning, has there been maybe one person that's really, or, or maybe it's a church that really stuck out to you while you've been raising support? Can you share a story with us about that? Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to, had to pick one person, I would say it's uh, one of my friends in Augusta. Uh, while we were in Augusta, we attended Christ Church. Uh, while I was going through nursing school, and there is a guy there, Derek Smits, and he had just come along and helped us in whatever way uh, we we needed throughout the support raising process. Uh, he set up our Facebook page. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how to do that. Still don't. Our prayer card picture. <laughs> yeah, our prayer card <laughs> picture. He made us look somewhat decent. <laughs> it's and hard so to do. It's hard to do, but he he was able to do it, um, and. Just going throughout the support raising process, it's kind of like a roller coaster, like you have, you know, ups and downs. Um, and during the down times, whenever it was discouraging, it was just good being around him because he has such a passion for Jesus. Um, and whenever you're, you're around someone who's passionate about something, you know, it rubs off on you and it affects you. And so it was good just seeing his passion for Jesus um, whenever we were going through those troughs. You know, just encouraging uh, time. Just whenever we'd go through a trough, I'd think, you know, do we really want to do this? You know, is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. And then I'd kind of just be around him, and just his love for Jesus would would influence me. I'd be like, yeah, you know, Jesus is worth it. He's worth, you know, the sacrifice, the difficulties of going through this, you know, to serve him in Thailand. So in many ways, uh, he has been the one person that, has uh, been most influential throughout the support raising yeah. process. Praise the Lord for Derek. Yeah, <laughs> so very thankful. Yeah. For him. What about you, Carly? I think another Augusta <laughs> uh, person. So um, Jenny Townsend is her name. Maybe she's watching. We love you, Jenny. And they have uh, her and her husband uh, Don have kind of been our mentors. That they have walked um, similar things at, at different times. They have they took seven children to Africa, um, you know, quite a bit of, of time ago. He's, Don is a doctor, and so they have experienced the mission field with, you know, more children than, <laughs> than just Macy, and, but they've been, they've been back for a while now, and um, Jenny's actually been to Thailand, you know, they continue to be very involved with ministry and missions and are just loving, but I think Jenny is, she's wise, she's warm, and she's welcoming. <laughs> Um, so just always encouraging, and I think one of the best ways that she's impacted me is she's she's um, so sweet, but she doesn't scare easy with the hard things, you know. So you can just any because we've hit some, you know, some some painful times with the Chiang Mai situation, and just she's just always been a safe place and a good conversation, and always encouraging, and that's just super super helpful and needed. Yeah. Good. Uh, you mentioned Chiang Mai, so uh, they've kind of had a, a, a transition in their focus. I mean, your whole process has been just transition, yeah. <laughs> hasn't it? Yeah, it has. uh, I would love to for you guys to tell us a little bit about Chiang Mai as much as you can, mm -hmm. but also uh, because that's been such a transition for you, maybe you could tell us once you do get to Bangkok, what's your vision? Mm -hmm. What will you be doing uh, in light of what's taking place in Chiang Mai? What will happen when you actually do get to the field? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were planning on joining Trey Kiki Adams in Chiang Mai, and we were going to be helping with church planning. Uh, I have a degree in, in nursing, and there's a nursing school right next door to uh, where the church plant used to be. And so our 
plan was to, for me to make connections into the nursing school and help the, the church reach uh, these nurses and faculty. And I guess it was in May that we found out that there was some confrontation in the church plant between uh, the missionaries who were there, Train Kiki, and the national partner that we had partnered with. And they brought these issues to the pastor, and he said that he was going to deal with these issues. And he, there was some time that went by after they had talked, and uh, he just decided that he was going to um, deal with the confrontation by saying that the missionaries there, Trey, uh, was spreading rumors about him. Mm -hmm. And so he was going to bring Trey up on defamation charges and in Thailand that's a serious offense. Um, mm -hmm. It can be a um, criminal offense and if convicted, you'll spend about a year in prison. And so Trey didn't want to spend a year in prison, <laughs> in a Thai prison, so he can't. Nobody wants to do that. No, it's not a pretty place. And so they came back to the States um, and they've been here on HMA uh, since May of last year. Okay. Um, so that's what we were planning on doing. Um, but we will now be going to Bangkok and joining the mills. And uh, thankfully, the Lord is leading the Adams back also. So we'll be able to, to work with them. So we're excited about that. But we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be working to help establish churches. So there's a, a church that's already established, Grace City. And Pastor Nati, a national pastor there, he's pastoring the church. Uh, he's, a, he's a neat guy. He's teaching at a, a seminary also in Bangkok. And he is the national director of City to City, which is a ministry out of New York, Redeemer New York, that helps establish um, churches around the world with an emphasis on a reformed presence, you know, gospel-centered church. And so it's neat that we'll be able to be at this church plant and to have connections with him. Uh, we hope that we'll be able to make some relationships with some of these seminary students and then eventually um, be involved in a group that starts another church plant in Bangkok or somewhere okay. in Thailand. So that's, that's our goal is to be involved in, in um, one church plant we know of, but hopefully, God willing, several church plants. I mean, you'll be living in Bangkok. Yeah. And you'll be doing language for a while. About a year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a, some, some questions I just want to ask from the CMPC body, but I want to know if you have any questions. So we're going to try our best to be able to uh, respond to your questions. So if you have a question, just uh, how would they do this? Just text it? Or uh, type it in on Facebook, and we'll see if we can get to it. So if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, you grew up here in the church. You guys came to the church as a family a little bit later. What would you recommend to families, even teenagers, if they wanted, if they felt the Lord's call to missions, what do they do with that? What would you recommend? What advice would you give them? Say, say it's a teenager or uh, parents. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say the first thing to do is to pray about it. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for, for guidance. Uh, and then the second thing I would say is to surround yourself with a group of people who will give you godly counsel. Whenever I was first thinking about going to the mission field, I talked with you and uh, Bob Sweet, Bob Bishop, Pastor John. And so I just surrounded myself with men who I thought were wise, who knew what ministry was like. <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, the story when we were on our first trip to the Philippines. Do you remember this? Probably so, yeah. So, so we we were uh, sitting, I was on an aisle seat, there was the aisle, and then Noah was on the other aisle seat. And the trip to the Philippines is like 15 hours long, yeah. one flight. We were on the flight from, I guess, Seattle to Japan. And what was it, maybe three hours into the flight, Noah leaned over the aisle to me and he said, I'm so bored, I'm going to eat my arm off. <laughs> do you remember that? I do, yeah. 
Back then, we didn't have TVs on every uh, seat in front of us. We just had to read or look at each other or sleep. Yeah. It was a long flight. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I do remember that, though. Um, yeah, so I'll just say surround yourself with godly people. Um, another thing is to get to know missionaries um, and get to know what they do as missionaries. And so I'll say get to know missionaries. I think that as a, a teenager, most teenagers will go on a two-week trip, and they'll say this is what mission is like. And so they go with people, and it's, it's very easy to be – unauthentic for two weeks mm. and to cover up your sin but if, you know if you go somewhere for a longer period of time you get to see what missionaries are really like <laughs> and so people are messy uh, missionaries are messy um, you would think you know working with Christians that it, it would be you know a perfect situation uh, and a lot of times it's sweet you know relationships are sweet in the church um, you're able to you know fully focus on full-time ministry and so that's good but uh, team teams are, are tough being on the team is tough and so I'd say get experience with the team find out what teams are like um, one of the reasons why missionaries leave the field is because of, of team dynamics like I think that's the, the number one reason why missionaries leave the field so I'd say find some missionaries spend some time with them find out what they do um, if you have the opportunity to Go take an internship with missionaries. Um, I would say go do that. that. That would be a good thing to do. If you want to use a vocation in missions, then I would say find a missionary who's doing that. So mm -hmm. if you want to use healthcare in missions, find a group of missionaries who are doing that and then go join them so that you can see what that ministry and those missions look like. Um, and so um, I know many of you know that Olivia Cunningham went with us to Belgium this past summer to cross-cultural ministry internship. And that's where missionaries go and they learn how to live cross-culturally, to minister cross-culturally. And so I think it was just a, a great opportunity for her, you know, as a teenager to go and to, to see the real life of missionaries, to see what we're like when we wake up in the morning without coffee and uh, and much sleep yeah and just to to get a good experience with missions and so i think that's a great ministry opportunity you know for any teenager in the church to go for a prolonged period of time and just to, to hear about missions and to learn about missions you have any thoughts about parents and uh, how they would counsel or, or raise their kids you know what Anything you would add to what he said? Oh, man. I just had to throw it back to Noah. <laughs> As I said. <laughs> okay. That's throw you under the bus. <laughs> Any thoughts? What, what uh, would say there's a high schooler here that feels the Lord calling them to missions and uh, they want to go to the hard place, they want to go to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And they tell their parents and, or they tell their grandparents. What do you do with that? Pray? Yeah. <laughs> I think you pray. I think it's um, a tough a tough situation uh, to be in, but knowing that our God uh, takes care of us, um, uh, but also knowing that we are to make wise decisions. And so if a teenager wanted to go to Saudi Arabia, I would ask, you know, who are you going to be joining there? Like, I would want to know a lot of specifics about uh, the situation um, and so I think just telling parents to one is to, to trust in the Lord knowing that the Lord will will take care of their children if this is what God wants for them to do uh, if God has given them a, a passion about it I don't think you want to squash that passion mm -hmm. uh, but also at the same time being wise um, using wisdom and allowing them to go, um, so I think you just have to balance. Yeah, balance those two. I don't think it's it, easy, but I think you just have to hold both of those simultaneously. Yeah, which is really important for the time that we're in right now is to to know that God is going to take care of us, 
and to trust him and to pray that he would provide. Uh, let, me, let me just ask you this. What's your greatest sacrifice as you're headed to the field, and what's your greatest privilege as you're headed to the field? Um, I think definitely for both of us would be would be family. Um, they, you know, they're the one thing you know we can we can't take with us, and so um, you know we will miss them the most. I think we also want to want to thank them. I was thinking about that just a few minutes ago. Like, just you know, people have impacted us, but I don't think we've thanked our family enough for everything that they have both done. I mean, we have carried like box upon box into Noah's parents' basement and. <laughs> You know, my parents have babysat so many times, which I know they love doing, but also, you know, they've, they've really helped us in so many ways. So we're going to, just going to miss them a ton. You know, we wish we could take them with us. And I think that, um, you know, it's hard to reshape those expectations of, you know, how you think that you would grandparent and how, you know, we would, you know, the family that we would have around us. We kind of got a small taste living in Augusta. You know, it's only three hours away, but of not having... You know, hopping on the plane to, to Thailand is a little different. <laughs> so I think, you know, that's, I think it's, it's a sac- the sacrifice for, for both ends. Like it's, I think they're, they're all believers, which is super helpful. So it's kind of combining two questions together. <laughs> um, so I think they're proud, but aside from us, they're affected the most. Yeah. And they, we get excited about, you know, seeing what the Lord is doing, and we hope to share that with everyone around us and share it to our family, but they, they don't get to experience it like we do, so they, they don't get all the gains, but they have to deal with the sacrifices the most. So it's, it's a, a joy, but, but a sadness for, for both ends, for sure. Yeah. What about your greatest privilege? I think our greatest privilege, at least for me, is just being used by God to, to take the gospel to a country that is not Christian. Uh, so Thailand's about 1% Christian. It's one of the most unreached open countries in the world. And so I just think it, it's going to be neat. Um, just getting to see God use us um, in whatever way or whatever capacity he does, but just being involved in that. Um, I know God has been doing extraordinary things in Asia and China, especially just where you see, you know, a lot of people coming to know the Lord. And so I just think it would be amazing to, to be involved in that in Thailand if God would just start um, a movement there of bringing people to himself. So I think that's just what I'm most excited about. Well, I have one more question. I don't know exactly how to do uh, questions yet. Uh, I have our feed going, but I can't can't quite see the questions. So I'm sorry that you didn't get to ask questions, and maybe you did, and I'm just not getting to it. So I apologize for that. But the I do have one more question, and then we're going to close out our time. Uh, how can CMPC pray for you guys? How can we pray for your parents? Mm-hmm. How can we care for them during this time? Um, maybe just a couple of prayer requests, and then I'd like to pray for you, and then we'll we'll close our time. I, I think one of the main requests that we have is just that God would give us more of a passion for Christ. Um, I think that's a Sunday school answer. So this <laughs> Sunday school, so I can say yeah, that. it's good. Um, I can say that here. Um, so I think that. You know, if we want, we want to stay in the field for long term, and I think that the one thing that is going to sustain us is our passion for Christ. Whenever we get there, there are a lot of good things about Thailand. It's a beautiful country, beautiful people, very hospitable, like the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a good place to live, but that's not enough to keep us on the field. Whenever we're there and away from family, I, I think the one thing that will keep us there is is our love for Christ. And so just pray that God will grow our, our hearts for Christ um, and that he'll sustain us, you know, through through the difficult times, especially as we transition. I think we'll miss family a lot. We'll miss friends, miss CMPC. So just pray that our love for, for Christ will sustain us okay. through that. Yeah. Parents, how can we pray for them? Maybe the same. 
that their yeah. passion for Christ would sustain them yeah. as you're away? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, just just keep it coming because we know people have been praying and we mm-hmm. can feel it. And I think you know, my, my mom had mentioned the other day, and I think adrenaline also, a lot of adrenaline was pushing us when we thought we were getting on a flight. And she's yeah. like, we'll probably all fall apart later, but right now I'm, I'm doing really good. And I was like, well, we have a lot of people praying for you. Mm-hmm. So please mm-hmm. keep it coming. Yeah. Well, I want to do that now. I want to pray for you guys and I pray for your parents as well. And then uh, maybe one or two more announcements and then we'll be done. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this morning. I do thank you for, again, for the, the privilege and the, the amazing work that you've given us in technology. I thank you that we can be together this morning and we can hear from Noah and Carly and Lord, I, I want to pray for them. Pray that you would uh, flood them with your love for them. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would give them great passion for you, not in working for you, but passion for you, uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, when the the time comes that they actually do go to Thailand and they start settling in, uh, Lord, I pray that you would just give them a real sense of your presence with them and that they would know that you'll never leave them or forsake them and you will continually remind them of who you are and why you have called them to Thailand. I pray for them with Macy over the next few weeks as they again walk through this transition of of postponing their date to leave i pray that you would give them grace and give them joy together as a family i pray help them to enjoy their time with their extended family i pray for their parents that you would bless them and you would sustain them with your love for them Uh, lord thank you so much for our time this morning we do uh, confess to you that we need your help we need your leading we need your guiding We need you to always take care of us, and we know that you will. And so we commit these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you guys for joining us as well. I want to tell you, you will probably, I think you'll be able to access this later on through our YouTube channel or Facebook channel. Uh, Dennis Swinehart is going to work to make sure this conversation is up and running for you later on in the day. But also, I want to tell you, this morning, there's one thing that we were not able to do, and that is have children's church. However, Mr. Mike has a a children's church video that I'm going to post a little bit later today. So uh, I encourage you to get your children together and sit down and listen and see and uh, hear from Mr. Mike for children's church later on.